All right, this is your lecture on muckrakers. Um, so muckrakers is a term that Teddy Roosevelt actually coined um, for journalists and writers who were exposing problems um, in the late 1800s, early 1900s in the United States. He meant it in a negative light. Like he, did, he didn't like these writers and journalists. He felt like they were focusing on all the negative things. Um, but in reality, the muckrakers inspired thousands and thousands of people to... Um, try to fix a lot of these profound issues um, in America at this time. But again, so muckrakers are um, these writers and journalists who, as you can see in this cartoon from back then, were shining a light on, on the muck and the, the uh, bad aspects of America. Um, the big uh, publications that featured these writers and journalists uh, were McClure's. You can see here McClure's magazine famously uh, published a lot of uh, these different exposés, uh, Cosmopolitan magazine, and then the New York World. Um, and then several of these actually, several of these writers and journalists had their own um, books. But these were publications, uh, monthly or weekly, daily publications that would feature these journalists frequently, or they published independently. Um, and you're going to be doing, uh, looking more in depth into one of the muckrakers of your choice, but I'm kind of going to give you a highlight reel of some of the most famous ones um, that you should know about um, heading into this unit. So we have Upton Sinclair is, if you hear the term muckraker, Upton Sinclair should be one of the first uh, authors that comes to mind. Um, the issue that he exposed uh, was conditions in the meatpacking industry in the slaughter yards. Um, and in general working conditions. His method of exposing this was he wrote the book The Jungle that you can see here. A few of you uh, maybe read that for your summer assignment. Um, and the, the Jungle actually focused a lot on uh, socialism, but most people um, with, with these side stories about these conditions and what uh, was happening in the, the meat packing industry and how um, the meat was tainted and how people's fingers and arms and things were being chopped off and put into and put it right in with the other ground up meat. Um, so while those aspects were in there, he really was writing about socialism, but people kind of uh, clung to um, and fixated on the issues of their meat supply. Um, the desired solution for him was regulation of um, the meat industry, uh, regulation of working conditions, and then the, for him, the expansion of the Socialist uh, Party. Um, Ida B. Wells, um, an African-American writer, <coughs> the issue she tried to expose uh, was lynching in the United States, especially in the South. It was happening elsewhere, though. Um, that was the issue. Um, the method is she uh, wrote books um, and did publish a few articles as well. Um, her desired solution was to make lynching um, an, illegal, an illegal act um, to get anti-lynching laws. Ida Tar Bell, another very famous muckraker. Um, she was one of the first ones to start writing for McClure's. Um, her issue was uh, Rockefeller's Standard Oil Monopoly specifically. Um, her parents' uh, oil company had been bought out by him through some pretty shady practices, and so she was exposing um, what, how Standard Oil operated, how Rockefeller operated, conditions in um, the refineries and his um, plants. Um, her method was to publish in McClure's kind of a, um, a multiple uh, kind of multiple articles within McClure's mag magazine. And desired solution was uh, she wanted Standard Oil broken up. Um, she felt that it was a monopoly, and she wanted antitrust laws. Lincoln Stevens um, was exposing, if you remember, the issue of political machines. So um, corrupt politicians, especially in New York City, Chicago, et cetera, um, who were controlling uh, the poor and immigrants, using them to kind of work their will and make a lot of money um, off of uh, their political position. So um, again, his issue was political machines and political corruption. His method was also articles, um, and uh, he had published his own book. Desired, his desired solution was to make um, voting and elections more transparent um, and to give uh, the people more power to remove corrupt politicians so they couldn't just kind of stay indefinitely in power. 
Uh, Thomas Nast was a, he had many, many issues that he exposed. He was a cartoonist. Um, one of his favorite was, like Lincoln Stevens, um, was political corruption. Um, but he did, uh, you'll see his cartoons featured throughout several of these units during this time period. Um, but he focused on a lot of different things. But you'll see um, several do focus on political machines. His method was cartooning, obviously, so political cartoons. And desired solution, there wasn't one specific desired solution here, but he's kind of exposing lots of different issues through all of his cartoons. Um, Jane Addams here featured with the children on the lower right. Um, her and Ellen Gates star. Um, her issue was um, the living conditions and treatment of immigrants to this nation. Um, and her method, <coughs> she did write articles, but she also was an activist and she went and started Hull House and then 200 other um, settlement houses across the nation for immigrants um, to help give them um, English lessons, give, give them other lessons to kind of transition to America, gave them temporary shelter, um, food, etc. So Desired Solutions was to have, um, again, better, better living conditions, better wages for immigrants, uh, more protection for immig the immigrant population. Uh, Jacob Rhesus is one of his uh, photographs, and Helen Campbell, similar to him, uh, he, photographer. And his issue was the um, specifically living conditions and working conditions of immigrants, um, but also the urban poor. Um, and his method was photography, and he would publish these huge books of, um, of photographs. Um, his most famous book was How the Other Half Lives, Again, how the other half lives. And his desired solution was, again, regulation of um, living conditions, these apartment complexes, these tenement buildings, um, how many people there were allowed to be in one room, um, the kind of standard um, living conditions that were in these places, um, just making decent kind of humane living quarters available to specifically to immigrant populations. Um, and then the last one, Florence Kelly um, was her issue was working conditions, especially child labor. Um, her method was again writing articles um, and publishing books, and her desired solution was um, having uh, better wages, an eight-hour workday, um, banning child labor, um, and generally improving working conditions. So laws that would um, make those things possible. And that's it for this lecture.